Now, I, does anybody think they could use the idea of pressure to explain why the aerosol might explode? Isla, what are you thinking? Is it because of the amount of pressure in the bottle and deodorant? Exactly. In well done. So the bottle contains a gas. And the gas is actually at quite a high pressure already. So the particles have lots of energy. They're hitting the walls of the uh, container with a lot of force. And so that causes quite a lot of pressure. Now, if you put that in fire, what happens is it heats up. So the particles get even more energy and they collide with the walls of the container even more, creating even more force. And if the pressure gets too high, that can explode, which is incredibly dangerous. Just filled it completely full. If you can see at the top, I filled it completely full of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a playing card over the glass. I'm getting a wee bit nervous now because of my laptop. I'm going to turn it upside down. Now, the atmospheric pressure holds all of that water in the glass. Now I'm going to hold that over my laptop. Please don't tell Mr. Berry that I'm doing this or Mrs. Cannell for that matter. So all of that water is being held in the glass over my laptop. Maybe get it away from my laptop again by this playing card on the top of the glass. Now the reason I'm able to do that and I can even give it a bit of a bounce up and down. I'm going to take it off over the sink. Um, is that, I'll manage to turn it over without actually uh, falling off, that is being held on by the atmospheric pressure. So that shows you that there really is this force that is actually acting up when it was upside down, not it's acting down, but it was acting up on my card to hold the card onto the um, glass and it's strong enough to actually stop that water coming out of the glass. So that's a party trick that you can try at home. We've got a couple of those for you today. Um, but you just need to make sure that you've got no air in the glass. So if you do this, I've just got my little sink there. So I've just got rid of a little bit of the water now. If you try and do it like that, it's not going to work. And the reason for that is you've got some gas trapped in there, which has a, a pressure which will be equal to the atmospheric pressure on the outside. So that's now going to be acting downwards. Um, and so you're not going to keep the water in the glass, so don't do that. But you can try that one at home if you've got a wine glass and a playing card today. Some eggs. Um, and I've just set up, before you um, logged in, um, I set up, oh it really smells. You should be glad you're not here right now because it is smelling like egg in my lab. Um, I've set up a conical flask, I'm just going to turn you on so that you can see that. Um, on top of a Bunsen burner. So uh, in the conical flask, if I just tilt that so you can see, I'm heating the water up so that it's getting nice and hot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this egg on top of the conical flask. So what's going to happen is there's really hot air inside the conical flask at the minute. I'm actually just going to give it another wee minute to heat up a little bit. Um, if the air is hot inside the conical flask, hands up, what's that going to do to the pressure inside that conical flask? Increase. Yeah, brilliant, Alex. I think that was you, but Isla, is that what you were going to say? Yeah. So the pressure of the, of the gas is increasing because the particles have more energy, so they're colliding with the walls of the conical flask more and with more force. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the Bunsen burner away so that the whole flask cools down. And as that happens, the pressure is going to reduce again. So the particles will cool down and they'll have less energy and they'll be colliding with the walls of the flask with less force and therefore the pressure is going to decrease. Now eventually what will happen is the pressure inside the flask is going to be less than the pressure outside the flask, so the atmospheric pressure that we were talking about before. So I want you to have a think about what effect that might have. If the atmospheric pressure in the room is higher than the pressure in the flask, would anybody like to guess what's going to happen to my egg? Which I'm putting back on now. So I've taken my Bunsen away, okay. I had heated the water up. 
giving us a cue. I'm really glad you said that, Alex. Now, you might actually be able to see that it's kind of started already. Now, the wording you use, you're absolutely right, Alex. It is going to go into the flask, but I'm going to slightly disagree with the words you use to describe what's happened. Because it's not so much that it's being sucked in. It's actually being pushed in. Now, hold on. I'm going to help it a little bit by just giving it a blow. And I might even just pull it up a wee bit so you can see. You can really see that that egg is going right into the flask there. And you're right, most people would say that that's being sucked in, but actually it's being pushed in. Now, hands up, why am I being pedantic about that language? Why is it being pushed in rather than sucked in? Any ideas? Why would I not say it's being sucked in? What would be pushing it in? Thinking about what we've just been talking about this lesson. The outside air. Well done, Alex. So it's the actual atmospheric pressure that is pushing that in. So you need to imagine that in this room, we have air particles constantly bombarding everything. And because the pressure of those particles is higher in the room than it is, than it is in the flask, they pushed the egg in. That force was actually enough to push the egg right into the conical flask. Okay, sorry about the smell.